Hello and welcome to the Raising Men Show and I'm your host Craig Carlisle. I'm hoping everyone is having a great Super Tuesday. That's not Super Tuesday in this concept of a political Super Tuesday, but it's Tuesday. And I'm always, always grateful for the Tuesdays that the Lord allows us to be together on the programs, on the broadcast, on the podcast, on the radio, however you're listening to the Raising Men Show. Uh, today we're going to deal with a topic that I don't always like to deal with. But it's a part of me. It's it's not how I define myself, but I find myself being where I am because this is the path the Lord has got me on. We're going to deal with grief today. For those who are new to my show or new to, you know, our story and my story, and sometimes I just really have to embrace it. I'm a widower. My wife died four years ago. February 24th of 2013. Yeah, okay. You get the, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too. I'm sorry too. But it doesn't change the fact of where I'm at. There's a lot of people out there who've lost spouses. Unfortunately, it's an everyday occurrence. But you can't lose yourself when you lose a, a loved one. God, don't get me wrong, it hurts like hell. I tell you, it, it hurts. And I just find today when I woke up, you know, I'm always looking to fleece the Lord in terms of what's the daily declaration. I, I have a couple of websites that I publish and lactose intolerance is one. And that's where I publish all of my writings. In fact, it's becoming a publishing company where I will publish my devotionals and the books about our life or anything else that the Lord inspires me to write. But today when I was looking to do my daily decoration, I was like, all right, Lord, what, you know, what do we do today? What do we do today? And I just kept feeling the same prompting for the Lord give me, giving me this topic for today. It's where today's show is called, what do I, what do I miss about loss? Okay. So what do you miss about loss? So anyone who's like me who's lost a loved one and you're trying to put your life together, you're you're giving yourself over to the Lord to say, Lord, you know, take all those pieces of my heart and fit them back together just so. And can you just take that dull ache away that's at the center of my chest where the where my heart used to be? The Lord's reminding me that the heart is still in there. And the pain I feel is just our body, my body's reminder that I'm still alive. That's healing, that's being healed daily. And I'm alive. And I have to keep living. I can't crawl up into my bed and die or sit over in a corner and die. Keep the covers closed over my head and keep the shades drawn and just let life go by and not deal with the hard topics. So what do I miss about loss? Yeah, you know what I miss about loss is I miss not having to change. Yeah, there's some changes coming in my life that I, I really miss not having to deal with those things. When, when, my, when my wife and I were, were married, yeah, okay, husband's wife, we've got to change. You've got to be able to do things differently. You've got to be able to not stay in the same corner. You've got to be able to constantly grow together so, but that's a different type of growth so I, that's a, there's a different type of relational growth there that you're growing together so what do i miss about loss i miss the growing together as a man you can easily say or i can easily say let me just make it real personal because i, I want to be able to help someone but first and foremost i've got to be able to help myself I can't help anyone until I help myself. So I'm going to be real about it. There's there's certain things I do miss about loss. From a men's perspective, I miss the thought of being loved. I, I miss the concept of waking up or just having a thought, you know what? She loves me. And 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 ladies, for for a man having the thought beyond the shadow of a doubt that that woman that you love is in your corner no matter 
who's there, no matter if it's good, bad, up or down, that that woman that you love loves you, man, that's a rush. Oh, my goodness. So, ladies, let's not get it twisted. Let's make sure we fully understand that we as men may or may not always say all the happy things and give you the responses that you're looking for. But I tell you, there's nothing like the joy and the passion and the rush of a woman's love. When she says she loves you, man, your whole day is just, man. That's what I miss about loss. Yeah. And I'm raising five boys. So I understand, in part, because their they're, they're mother of my sons, they the, the love that she expressed for them wasn't the same as this romantic Eros love that I'm talking about. But for a young boy growing up, and, and psychologists say that, you know, as children, boys fall in love with their moms first. Because it's the first woman we ever really know, right? I mean, she's always there, hugging on you, kissing on you. And I'm, that's not, you know, we're not trying to be pedophilic here, so let's, let's keep it real. But for a young boy, that's all they know is their mom. Their mom's love, and they get excited to see their mom. And I, and I promise you, every day I try to do the best I can to hug my kids and to love my kids. And, you know, there's I got a couple that walk up to me all the time. Dad, give me a kiss. I want to give you a hug. I want to give you a hug. Man. I, I'm i not wired like she is or she was. So my kids are missing that side of life. And I, I try. I'm trying. But that's just not who I am. That's just, that's just not a part of me I'm capable of doing. So though my kids are growing, missing a part of life that they just so desperately want. I mean, I can probably count, I don't know, 15 times a day when a few of the little ones want that from me. I try my best to squeeze them as hard as and tight as I can, but it's not like mom. I try to kiss their little lips and squeeze their cheeks and can't do it like mom. Yeah, I miss, what I miss about loss is being able to watch their mother kiss them on their foreheads and cheeks. Hmm. Hmm. It's not supposed to have a lot of pause and open air and radio, right? And broadcasting and wasting space. But that's not what the show's all about, though, right? This show is to help people. It's supposed to help. Help myself. So it helps. And even when I was considering, I was sitting there wondering, I felt a voice inside, a dark voice saying, you know, don't don't do that show, man. Don't 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 do this to yourself. But I have to. I've got to write it out. I've got to blog it out. I've got to record this program to get this out. I can't let the sadness and hurt stay inside unspoken. There's no way I can believe. Really. There's no, no longer do I let myself believe that I'm a unicorn where there's just me out there who has this concept and this hurt and this pain of loss that I'm not the only man that's ever lost his wife. I'm not the only man that's ever raised children, all boys. I, I, there's no way I can believe it. Now, I don't necessarily have any context. So if you're listening to the show or if you are, are a regular listener or if you're new, if you know someone who's got a story like mine, man, send it out. Send the link out to them. Put them in contact with me. I'd love to join and link arms and be able to have conversations and just provide an opportunity to dialogue, to had to go back and forth, to have to talk with someone and, and have someone talk to them and, and hear their pain and struggle and just to listen because there are moments in moments throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the months and throughout the years as we go on that, man, and it gets to be lonely, quiet. So many other people have 
their significant others, their spouses that are with them in their house every day. And I try to tell everyone that, that will listen to me that, man, you can't take your relationship for granted. Yeah, I said it. I did it. I was married 11 years. Many of those 11 years, I thought I had time to fix and right what was wrong. So what I what do I miss about loss? I miss the being able to try to fix what we had gone wrong. I mean, man, the wheels had come off my thing. So many people thought, oh, Craig's mad and Sandy, they've got a fairy tale storybook wedding, storybook marriage. Oh my gosh. At least I always tell us all the time, oh, I can't imagine you guys ever arguing, ever having any problems. Oh, that's so great. You guys have this great relationship. And dude, trust me, believe me, I, I love my wife. I did. I But we had problems. And the sad part is that we had problems that we didn't address. And I think that's what's even worse. As you're in a relationship right now, I if it's not the relationship at the moment that you dreamed it would be, well, you know what? A lot of it's probably you. And I say it that way because I have to acknowledge it for myself. I have to accept that the flaws and the faults I had and take responsibility in my marriage. I didn't do everything I could. So I can't sit back and say now that, oh, I did all I could. I did all I could. And it just, and she died and then I can keep going. There's a part of me that that has to acknowledge the fact that I didn't do all I could. So to all of those of you that are married and in a relationship that, you know, whether it's, you know, perfect summertime harvest season in your marriage, but I'm definitely excited and praying that it is, or it's wintertime and it's cold in your marriage and you just don't understand where the other person is, or maybe even where you are. Maybe there's some tragedy that's that's befallen your marriage, or maybe there's a medical condition that you're dealing with, or maybe there's just some choices that you're making that are just flat out wrong. I always used to tell myself that I would do this, and I would always share the same feedback to the guys when you get married or you get in a relationship. I mean, you got to be the same person that she fell in love with. You can't just come in, all of a sudden you get married, and we as men, sometimes we get comfortable, and we want to put our feet up on their couch, and, and we're just like the whole song that Janet Jackson has. You know, what have we done with for, what have you done for me lately? And our girls consider us to be these deadbeats now, because guys, we used to, you know, we got to admit, when we find this woman that we want, that just really gets us going, that we love, it's like, oh my gosh, I got to get to her. We'll do anything. We'll cross the universe for her. Go through a wall, go into a burning building, Okay, so we're back to the songs again, right? We'll take a grenade for you, right? But I tell you what. If you don't continue to do those things, your girl will starve to death. And I'm talking about emotionally and physically starve to death. And we as guys can't get upset and when we were sit back and go, she's changed, she's changed, she doesn't do the same things that I like, and we're not the same person that I married. Well, you know what? Things happen. We got to understand, we have to grow together. There's some things that may have turned and caused her to, or caused yourself to have become different. Because life happens. And it doesn't happen just because it happens. It just, It happens. There's circumstances on our path of life that just cause us to make turns. Have crisis of belief, as I learned in the experience in God study. But as you continue to grow together, you've got to ask yourselves, what what got you together for one? And what got you together is going to be the same thing that holds you together. And in so many cases, God puts you together. And so there, there are a lot of cases you have to admit that you put yourself together, right? You, you chose that person. You accepted something. Whether you accepted it to be right, accepted because you were lonely, or you're in it. Should you stay in it? You know, I'm not getting involved in that because that's covenant. That's between you and God. That's the situation that you're in. But I tell you what, if you got into a relationship and you're in it right now and you love that person, you that person loves you, and you're both living, you've got an opportunity to make change. You've got an opportunity to, opportunity to make the best of that situation right now. I don't care if you're on the verge and you've got divorce papers sitting on your desk, if you're even listening to this while you're sitting in a divorce attorney's office lobby, get ready to sign that paper. There's an opportunity for you to make that thing right. 
You've got to acknowledge the issues you have. God, most times, we as guys, we don't communicate enough. We don't say the things that are on our mind. We don't share the things that make us happy or sad. Sometimes we try to get our wives and, to play, and girlfriends to play 20 questions with her. It's not that serious. We used to, used to think as guys, oh, we're not complicated at all. But you know, what? That's a, that's a total lie. I was sitting in a, in a class uh, at our church. We were doing Keep Your Love On by Danny Silk, that study. And, and, and I, I'm not saying I have a bitter, men, you know, bitter mentality about those who are married. I listen to the struggles of, that they have. And, 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 and I remember listening to, to groups of people, and not just in that class. I've listened to married couples since my wife's been gone, and I, and I hear them quite often talk about, oh, my spouse does this, my husband does this, my wife does this. And, oh, man, I try my best not to, not to hear that smallest violin playing so softly and shrilly in the background. Because I'm sitting there thinking to myself, people like me who've lost their spouse would give so much to have the problems that you have if you're married. We're not married anymore. For those that are like me, our spouse has died. And with it, a part of us died. And you're complaining about your spouse? <laughs> I've I've asked the Lord, you know, several times, Lord, I, I I'd love to have a spouse again. Don't take for granted what the Lord has given you. What do I miss about loss? Yeah. I miss being married. And I believe it's coming again, and I'm excited. I have that expectation of being married again. So, yeah, I, I, I'm going to get there again. I know the word says, he who findeth the wife finds a good thing, and I'm looking. A friend of mine had him on the show, Eric Tomlinson. Man, great dude. And if you missed that show, then you need to go back and check out the archive for A Match Made in Heaven. That dude was married to his wife. First wife, sick and died, left him with four girls. This man raising four girls for a stretch by himself. Lord put him in the same path as another young lady. Great, great woman. But before he married this his current wife, he was challenged by his pastor to create a list. What do you mean a list? I mean, I, I've heard this magical list, and I think some of us have heard these magical lists as well. And it's a list of what you want in a spouse. And I, you know, I used to see this one young lady, great person, great, 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 great person. And I'd heard her talk a lot about this list. She's got this list. She's got this list. And I used to think, well, what is this mystery list? What are you talking about? So I finally asked, I mean, what is this list? And she explained what it was. And I was kind of, kind of taken aback. And as a dude, right, you know, you got to get that ego. Like, oh, I'm at least, I'm, at least I'm on the list. Yeah, 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 I'm on the list. But I get it now because Eric was, has been in my ear even to this day. I mean, and the show has aired, you know, about a month ago now. And he just texted me a few days ago. Hey, how's that list coming? You finished? Eric, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've finished my list. I don't know. Well, you know, I don't even know if you've actually ever finished the list. I, I've created the list. Eric's list when he made made it for his second, you know, in, in, his, in anticipation of his second wife, he had 42 items on that list. And I don't have to imagine that there was more items before and after, right? So he made his list. He prayed about it to find out what items on the list that the Lord wanted to take on or well, put on and take off. So I'm in that point now where I've made my list and I'm, you know, like Christmas, that's why I'm checking it twice. So I'm trying to find out what needs to be on the list and off. So if you're like me and you've, you've lost a spouse, make that list. What do you want from your next spouse? You tall, short, thin, fat, in sickness and in health, great sense of humor, not great sense of humor, how they smell and what they say, and what do they like to do, shows they like to watch, what places they like to go. Make it detailed because the, the Lord already knows what you want, but you got to voice it. 
in the spiritual realm, it's legalistic, right? So you've got to make it plain. So out of your mouth and out of each word and legal document, make it plain, write it out. What do you want? Because it also helps you from the standpoint of what you're looking for. Because when you find it, if you're not, if you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to settle for anything that you find. And I'm not saying what I did that with anyone. I'm saying I, I had to step back from relationships and, and, and really get myself in order. I think I probably ruined a, a couple of good relationships and passed on them and walked away from them because I wasn't sure of who I was and I wasn't sure of what I wanted. And I couldn't do that to myself and definitely couldn't do it to another person. So it's no disrespect to anyone that I've, I've been out with since the passing of my wife. I needed to make sure I was ready. So what do I miss about loss? I, I miss the fact of having to do things like this and be ready for the next, be ready for relationships. Because, man, I tell you what, 47 and out there trying to figure out what the dating world looks like now. It's a weird place. What do I miss about loss? Yeah, I, I miss the fact of not having to date. I miss the fact of being able to date the woman that you're with or you date your spouse and being able to have fun and with that person and grow and yeah, that's what I miss about loss. I miss being able to hear her laugh with the kids and take them places and decorate the house. We're in the process of moving and I'm packing up this house right now and going through all of the memories of every pe- every painting, every picture, every piece of furniture that I remember hanging in this place just so. And I'm not saying that when you're married is you don't move. That's different. But what do I miss about loss? I hate, I miss having to not pick the place. I went and thankfully found a place for us to live. The wife, she found a home. She sought out a home. We sought out, we prayed for a home. I prayed for a place to live. Please believe it. There's no disrespect to the place and the owners of the place that we're moving to. But this is this is a season in my in our lives and a season in my life when I'm starting to understand where I'm supposed to be going and understanding first and foremost where I'm at. What do I miss about loss? I miss having to do the self evaluation because when you're with someone who really knows you. They help you understand where and who you are because they get you. I miss the fact of not having someone really, really get me. Yeah. Yeah. That's it right there. I think that's what I miss about loss the most. Is it? making yourself vulnerable enough and open enough for someone to really get you. Lord, I I pray that I'm able to do that again. And I pray for all of you out there that have gone through that lost your spouse and you want to be loved again and you want to love again. Starts with wanting to want that space right there when you've changed your mind over to Christ and you've agreed with him so whatever you want for my life I want that and to give that final peace because it's easy to say that you do that right we all say that you know or we all should say that we want what the Lord wants for us and are striving after that but there's certain parts of you that you hold back I mean if if the Lord came into your house right now if your house represented your your heart and your whole body what are you what are you hiding from the Lord and this whole part of, of, of dealing with loss and, and grief that I deal with the most is I, I don't give my heart to God. Not, I'm, I'm talking about the, the pieces of my heart where I love, the, the, the physical, the sexual, the emotional part of the loving. I'm holding that back from him. And I hold it because that's the part that hurts the most. That's the part where I've been so unsure that I truly believe that the Lord is going to send a replacement there suitable for someone enough to be able to understand how raw and hurting that my heart is and be able to handle it just so.
yeah, that's what I miss about Moss. Yeah. But you know what? I, I'm I'm living this part of my life with expectation. I'm expecting the Lord to make every scripture true as it replies as it applies to me and my family. I know there's a plan that He has for me. That's for success and not to destroy me. And with that plan, it has everything encompassed in it. Love, peace, patience, the laughter, the joy, and those great times. The, the being able to date and that whole, as they say, the whole Bambi titterpated parts of love. Where when you think about that person, you just smile, you know. Perfume comes in the room and you know that's them. Yeah, those are the parts. That's what I miss about loss. But that's also the part about loss that I'm excited about. That's coming for us. I'm looking forward to my kids developing a relationship with that person the Lord has put us together with so they can be able to have another extension in their life. A young lady that they'll be able to love as well. Not to replace their mother. So let's not get it twisted. We're not looking for a replacement part. We're looking for an extension and an, and an addition to their lives. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that part of their life, to watch my kids smile when it's someone else that they can give a hug to as well. Hang out with, sit next to, sit on their lap and be excited about them. So I know that, there's, that they're out there. Yeah, she's out there. For those of you who've suffered loss like myself, they're out there. But you'll never find them if you don't want to find it, because if that's what you're thinking, you're going to believe you're going to get what you believe. So if you believe you won't find it, then you won't. If you believe you're not deserving of it, then you won't. But you have to believe it's because there's an art to living. And the, it has everything to do with what you believe in. If you believe in God, believe in he loves you. He believe if you believe that he has great things in store for you. Yeah. You're going to find it. Feel peace about it and, and peace with that part of the plan that you're in that he's got you in. Yeah. And you have to know that you love him and that he loves you. Because there's nothing created in heaven or in earth that can ever separate you from the love of God. Yeah. That's what I'm learning about loss. And I hope you all have learned something too. Again, I'm your host, Craig Carlisle, and you've been listening to The Raising Men Show. Tuesdays, Super Tuesdays, right here with me. I love you all. Have a great day.